Okay, welcome everybody to the stay at home workshop. So what I figured I'd do a quick video, although quick, come on, you guys know me, nothing I do is quick. I do a video on what I'm doing to kind of get cars quickly weathered and, you know, basically slapped on the layout. Let's call it fleet weathering. I know this is out there before, a lot of people have done it. There's other techniques and whatnot, but I'm going to show you what I do. Um, you know, I'm down to about 10 minutes or so per car, depending how far I want to take the weathering, but I'll show you that. And I've been looking at, and I'm talking about, excuse me, mostly um, Acurail cars. Let's say uh, this one right here is a branch line yard master car that I bought on eBay, already assembled. This here, I believe, is a titchy flat car, though I'm not positive. I'm not sure because it's got separate grabs on it, so I don't know what it is. But, again, I was on eBay. This gentleman was selling a bunch of built-up cars, relatively cheap. Uh, you, know, you can do Intermountain ready-to-runs, Katy ready-to-runs, the Branch Line ready-to-runs. If you build a Branch Line, uh, Blue Line kit, there's a Blue Line blue, Blueprint, whatever they are, the, the better kits. Uh, anything, basically, can be done this way. It, it, the intent is not to make them contest models, so... You're going to say, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. i do this. Uh, yeah, got it. Okay, I'm not going to go into a lot of excruciating detail on these cars. I don't crack out an airbrush. I'll show you what I use. I'll show you the technique. And the intent is to get cars on the layout quickly. Then you can always come back later, refine them, redetail them. You know, if you wanted to get to the point where you're cutting off stirrups and adding better stirrups and adding wire, uh, you know, lift rings and grab iron and stuff, great. But that's not the intent of this. This is, you know, about 10 minutes or so, get them on the layout. So, we're going to start with this one. This is a, like I said, a Yardmaster kit that uh, from Branch Line, pre-assembled, Indiana Harbor Belt. I don't even know, like I'm not even checking the prototypical accuracy of these. Although I think Branch Line's usually pretty well, pretty prototypical. If they make it, the Indiana Harbor Belt probably had these cars. You gotta be careful sometimes because you know sometimes there's foobies, but again, for the push I was under, I'm not really worried about it. And then this one is a CNO flat car. And obviously this needs a bunch of work because you know that plain black, obviously plastic looking deck is just an eyesore. So I'll show you what I do to weather that. This so this car might take a little bit longer because of the deck. This car will probably take about 10 minutes unless I show you the other steps that I do maybe to, to detail the roof a little bit more or to weather the roof some more but we'll go through that so I'll go ahead and uh, get this ready I'm going to try to show exactly what I do so I might try to put the camera here which is now freehand ah, on a tripod and shoot over my shoulder shoulder I don't have a lapel mic or anything like that so I'm not sure how great the sound quality will be but I'll try to do it that way and show you what I do and then the results will hopefully wind up somehow. Just as an example, these are two cars I just finished. These are actually Ather and Blue Box cars. They are from Bill Schopf for his layout, the Baltimore and Lehigh. And I said, Bill, I need, I need two of your hoppers. And he agreed to give them to me. Straight out of the box, decorated, you know, but Ather and Blue Box. Now, I, on these, I did... Probably harder to see. I did replace the stirrups because they just look so freaking terrible. So I did knock those off and put on uh, uh, detail associates ones. I did replace the brake wheel with a KD minor brake wheel just because I had them in a box and they, they looked pretty good. I did add KD couplers. I did rewheel them with uh, Intermountain wheels. I did use the outer and side frames, and they're they're fine. And see this one, I made a coal load for it. This one's loaded. That one's empty. They're gonna run back and forth into Fairview. Uh, I'm gonna say the B and L got the contract for that. So anyway, so that's kind of what they look like. Although the lighting here is probably terrible. But all right, so we'll start with these cars, y'all. Get my light back down there so you can see what it looks like now. So that's the fresh version before starting. And uh, again, I'll try to show you actually what I do. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are at the bench. And uh, we'll see how this works. 
I got the camera on the tripod and I'm sure I'm going to kick the legs several times, but all right. So the first thing I'm going to do on this car ah, is basically take the trucks off. I'm to the point now where my standard procedure is pretty much to put KD couplers on. And this has KDs. Now they're glued on. The coupler pocket is what I don't like, but that's okay. I'll leave it alone. Oh, and this one's got a different screw at this end as opposed to the other end. That's interesting. And then I don't mind the AccuRail side frames. I keep actually what I do because I'm going to paint the underframe. And otherwise, I found if I don't do this, I lose these. <laughs> I wind up losing stuff. So I'm just going to put it right back from whence it came. So I have it there. Like I said, this one's a flat head, not a Phillips head for some unknown reason. That's what you get when you buy stuff on eBay. And that's what I get when I drop my screwdriver. So, all right. That's an earth shattering about that. And then, see, so are these AccuRails? I'm not sure. I think they are. I can't read it. But these have plastic wheels, so kind of what I'm settling on is replacing these plastic axles with Intermountain steel axles. Like, probably not a huge deal. You probably don't really have to, but I do. Um, I just do it that way. All right, so I'm going to take these, and these are going to go into a uh, mount from, for painting them. This, since it's already got KDs, I don't have to change them. Because it did come with KD couplers. And then what I'm going to do is I'll show you how I paint. Again, real quick. Um, I'll go ahead and paint that. So this one I'll set aside for the moment. And I have these little, I don't know, these little foam things from somewhere. I don't know where I got them. Now this car, it looks like it already has steel axles. So I'm going to go ahead and keep them. But what I will do, I don't want to... Wreck the, oh, there's no brake wheel. I don't buy that a brake wheel to this one. Okay. Same thing. I tend to do two cars at once. Because normally if I'm if I'm painting wheels, I have two of the wheel jigs. And I have set up for two sets of side frames, truck side frames. So again, sorry, this is an, I'm not used to doing this type of video. Watch me fumbling around here. Do do do. Should I sing while I'm doing this? <laughs> All right. So that's that. This is a flat head, but it's a different kind of screw. That's interesting. All right. What I should do is magnetize the screwdriver. And make it a ton easier. I thought I thought I did have it magnetized. All right, so nothing too exciting there. And this already has KDs in it. They seem to operate. No, it was a little wonky, but it should be all right. And again, for the most part, uh, this looks pretty much ready to go. It is missing a, a grab iron here, which I could add, but you know, I'm not going to worry about it. And then we'll see how we're going to paint that, but I'll do the underframe first. I'm not sure what this little bunch of... <laughs> Some books. Put a piece of chewing gum there or something. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure. I don't think this is a titchy car. This may be a red caboose car. Alright, well, hey. A little bonus from the eBay seller. Alright, so then... Since this one already has metal wheels, I'm going to go ahead and reuse them. So I'll take the wheels out. Again, this is not earth shattering. Or anyone does this. I don't know if these are Intermountain or if they're Proto, but I'm going to assume they're Intermountain. So I have this little thing, which I really don't like. You can see it's broken all the time, and it's this freaking space age material you have to use certain special glue to assemble it with i'm like come on anyway i'm just being snarky today let me 
cabin fever is starting to set, set in here. So I'm going to put these in. Don't you dare roll away. These are somewhat painted, but not, uh, not the way I like them. So, again, as I <laughs> fiddle around, trying to get these buggers in this stupid little holder. <laughs> so, uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay. So now they're in there. In, in, in. Press it in. Alright, so now they're ready to go be painted. And what I do, I don't know, let me see if I can do this. Uh, okay. Now this, <laughs> what does even sh Hold on a second. Let me stand up and fiddle with the camera. Oop, wrong way. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so this is just four skewers and a piece of pink foam. And I just take the, again, this is not rocket science. I'm sure a lot of guys do this. Just put these side frames here. Bada boom, bada bing. So, the light you can, anyway, so that's the concept. So I have this. I have this. Because I already have some other Intermountain wheels. I have a bunch of them already painted up, ready to get. Um, so I'll do that. And then I'm going to take these two out, out to the, <laughs> Wait till you see this high tech paint booth I use and get these in, in an initial little sla slap some paint on them. So, all right, so let's do a pause and we'll go out to the paint booth. Ooh, isn't this exciting? Okay, here we are in the high tech paint booth, which is my garage. <laughs> the light's terrible. Um, I had to crank the ISO to 1600, so hopefully it's not too grainy. But here we have the wheels in the wheel jig and I have my uh, and I drop it on the ground now and I have the trucks ready to be painted and all I use I'm going to start with this this is Vallejo hobby paint spray and this particular one again I don't know if it's going to be legible Panzer Gray I'll put the information down below so I'm going to use that and I'm going to use hobby again hobby spray this is US khaki and there's one other one that I've fallen in love with, and I'll show you in a moment. But what I do here, give them a shake. Okay, I probably could have edited that out, but tough. Okay, so <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take these, give them some of the pans are gray, which is basically grimy black. It's almost a dead match for grimy black. All right, let that sit for a minute. And then what I do, if this is visible or not, let me see if I move this here. I just paint the side frames. Try not to get it on my wife's car. <laughs> let's turn that around. Okay, and this is a nice, you know, kind of a flat grayish Black color, all right, good to go. Then it takes a US khaki, which is kind of a dirt type color. And I just, whatever, do a shot on the wheels. And that's it, done. That's all I do. Now, if I got a little bit too much on it, because I'm a little too aggressive here in the video, all right, then I just come back with a little bit of. All right, we'll take a look downstairs when we're done, but that's all I do. I don't worry about a rust color or anything like that. It's kind of a dirty, tannish, earthy type color. All right, and then I also do the same thing with the khaki on the side frames. Give them a little bit of a dust, dirt, spray type. You guys probably can't see anything, but it looks good. Okay. So that is that done. What was that, about a minute and a half? I don't know. All right, now, for the cause, what I do, I'll set these up. 
Let me I'll do the box car first. I tend to use both at the same time, but it's a, it's a little more difficult. It's a little different, I guess I should say, with a box car. Uh oh. Do -do -do -do. Versus a flat car, which is here. Alright, so now for this, I really like this. Again, same thing, but this is German Field Gray. I don't know if that's visible or not. Is it focusing on there? I can't even tell. Looking through this damn thing on the back of the camera. Alright, so this is a great, great color. Wasn't that exciting as a video? Right, I know I should probably shake a little bit longer, but it's fine. What I like to do is I get like to give the entire underframe. And yep, even up the sides a little bit. And then, so I can't really walk because the darn tripod's in the way. Hit the ends a little bit. And you might do too much, but who cares? It's weathering, you know? Alright, so now I'll usually let that sit. Well, actually what I'm going to do... Oops. And this is where, depending on how weathered you want the car to be, will dictate basically how much you do. And this stuff dries real fast, so I'm going to carefully take it and just flip it so I get the other side. And pretty much get this side. Get the ends a little bit. Okay, now, it's hard to see. I'm not sure you guys can't see anything, but that's just showing you what I'm doing. That's really hard to get a good look at it. Yeah, you probably can't tell with the light. I'm not even sure if I'm aiming this right. And then what I'm going to do. Set it there, and even come across. Kind of dull the... All around it, there we go. Do, 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 do. Now, sometimes, if I'm really feeling inventive, I may also, just on the bottom, so again, we're going to take it here. I'll go ahead and do this just for the fun of it. And this khaki, which is kind of the, you know, like a, a dusty, dirty spray type. Just give it a little. That's all. That's it. Like that. This even got some weird looking patterns on it. Maybe because there was dust on it. I don't know, but who cares? You know, it's weathering. And then, that's it. That's all she wrote. So, let that sit just for a moment. I'm just going to pause just for a second here. I'd like to let it sit for just a little bit to dry up. And then I'll go ahead and handle it and get out of the way. Okay, we're back. I'm just going to do the same exact thing on the flat car. Oh, can you hear the train going by? Yay! <laughs> How's that for an appropriate sound effect for a video. Now again, didn't get much at all on the side, so what I'm going to do is just give it a little bit. Actually, I'm coming in from, you probably can't, can you see I'm coming way from, just across the bottom of that side. Like I said, this stuff dries pretty darn fast, so you can, okay, so, oh, I like that, oh, yeah. So you get right along, the, you probably guys can't tell, all right, no, we'll, we'll, we'll look downstairs. Do the same thing, get it on this side, and come in along here. This kind of forces it to look like it's sprayed up from the bottom, from the track. Good, that's just subtle. I'm going to leave it like that. Right, I'm going to let that set for a minute. I went a little bit heavy there. But this stuff dries really nice and flat, so you can't, of course, you can always overdo it, but. All right, let that set for a minute, and then we'll be right back. Okay, now we're back. Now, what I'm going to do now, normally in my research and looking and opinion, you know, 
the, the top wood on the flat car is going to kind of fade to a, a darkish gray type color. Some light gray, some dark gray. There's probably going to be spills and nail holes and, and gunk all over it. So what I'm going to do with the same field gray is just give it a shot because that's a nice, it's a start. It's not going to be the finish, but it also gives a little bit of tooth. It's kind of almost like a, sort of like a primer. And a little bit that way, a little bit that way. Good, all right? So that's it for that one. And then I will come back in just for the fun of it. Just for some variety, okay. All right, that's it. So I'm gonna let these uh, set up and dry up and uh, next we'll go back in the basement and see how they look from this wonderful high-tech <laughs> top of my recycling can in the garage paint booth. All right, back in a moment. All right, here we are back in the workshop. You can see I'm just going to let these things sit here for a while. Got the two cores. I got the wheels and then the trucks sitting up there. Now these are actually, you can actually take these, these actually, again, this stuff dries up pretty darn quick. I could actually keep, of course, they're stuck on there a little bit. <laughs> Should never try to do this live. Or anyway, they're fine. <laughs> but you could, but I'm not going to rush. I'm going to let these sit probably overnight, which is normally what I tend to do. Let them go, go off, do something else. Then we'll come back and finish them up. So, so far, I don't know how much time has it been. About, I'll say 10 minutes, you know, total time. I, I'm losing track here, but not real long. And uh, you'll see that once I get everything back together, you could actually leave them like this. Maybe not the flat car because of the, the deck, but the box car you could leave it be. But we'll stop there, we'll see how it is, then maybe I'll do some more just to have some fun. So, all right, we'll be back once these are dried up and we're ready to forge ahead. All right, so what I figured I'd do, since the other stuff's drying up, what I'm going to do is, uh, th these are going to be the four wheel sets I'm going to use for the one car that had the plastic the, the plastic axles. Now what I'm what I what I've come to do what I like to do I don't know if it's necessary or not but sometimes when you when you paint those or especially I don't know the way some guys are painting them when I buy them off eBay there is paint all over the treads and I'm just cleaning it off and for what what I'm using for that I don't know if these will show up I can't even tell if it's legible these are from Flory models they're called skinny sticks these are like a polishing weathering stick very very fine I like them I know you probably can get some similar from squadron I had one but it was a little bit larger these I like because they're thin I'll put the uh, part number down in the description because I'm not sure that's even legible I can't even tell but I really like them so pardon me as I'm moving around here oh, trying to not hit the tripod <laughs> alright so these are these the white sides really 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 fine a little bit not much at all but a little bit of a grit on that and then I just take the wheels and these are the ones I had painted before and then I'll just come in and kind of go around and give them a quick cleaning on the tread I know that makes them nice and shiny but I figured I'd rather have them shiny and not have paint flakes coming off falling on the layout. You can, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit of the... You do get some dirt off of these. And these aren't bad. Because these I did paint in the jig. So they tend to not get as much overspray, but there's still some. So I just go through and... Give all these a clean. I'm forcing you through this. Again, trying to keep this kind of real time as to what it takes to get car going. Now the ones that I did paint that came off the flat car, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to wait till they dry a little bit. Just kind of go around. Da, 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 da. Are you guys bored yet? How's everybody doing? Everyone doing alright with their social distancing? It doesn't really bother me and my wife was teasing me because like you're always social distance. You're down in the basement. I'm like, well, there you go. <laughs> I'm pre-made for a pandemic. 
can see how that gets dirt on that. So, no, in all seriousness, it's, it's not really a joking matter. I do hope everyone's okay. <sighs> staying healthy, staying virus free. I know here in the States, things are still ramping up, and you know, certain individuals want to get us back by Easter. Whew, I, oh, man, I don't know. It's tough, though. I will say, it's a, you know, you have to balance both, and I certainly, certainly don't envy people. <laughs> oh, man, that's why they're paid the big bucks, right? Because, you know, you got to balance people's livelihoods, which is, which is really, really serious. I mean, there's a lot of folks that are going to be really hurt, and I think. And then, of course, here in the States, we passed all these wonderful relief packages, and which is great, but... <laughs> You know, I had to think about my own budget, and if I had to come up with, on a different scale, you know, $10,000, it's like, how are you going to pay it? How are we going to pay back $2 trillion? And whatever else it might be. I mean, good Lord. I just worry that if that happens, do we get a lot of uh, inflation or something like that? They just keep printing money. I saw one guy from the Fed say, yeah, we can just print money. Yeah, you can. I don't disagree with that, but... What good does it do is if we get 1200 bucks as a citizen and then a loaf of bread costs $200, you know? Uh, anyway, I don't, I'm just going to... Maybe I'm thinking too much into it. Now, this is a resistance wheel set. One of the ones I bought from uh, Logic Rail Technologies. It's because I'm getting lazy. Can I paint those as well? They actually use Intermountain wheels, so these are all going to be the same wheel sets going back in. you got to be careful on these. So you don't it too much. Break off the resistor. I'm just trying to get some of that. You can see that. I mean, it, you get some. You get some stuff off of that. So what's this going to be? About five minutes. It's going to take me. So all right, I'm, I'm probably wrong. It's probably going to take me about 20-25 minutes to do a car. But anyway, but so be it. This doesn't really count as weathering. Well, I guess you got to clean up from the painting of the wheel, so I guess it does. So, okay, so that's that. Get them all nice and clean, and they are ready for installation. You can see the dirt that you get on that. Yeah, so you will pick up some stuff. Okay, hopefully that showed up. Okay, let's uh, we're ready. Get the cars or the trucks over here and keep moving ahead. Okay, we're back. So, everything's kind of dried up overnight. Now what I'm going to do, you know, these are painted. I don't know how well it's going to show up because I can't see. Now what I tend to do is I will go with this little paint in the rear end. And just come in and go ahead and clean out the, you know, the true tuner, whatever it's called. Now you're supposed to do this because that's what model railroaders are supposed to do. So, <laughs> all these rules. So, go ahead and do all this. Again, you don't really need to see this because that's all I'm doing, but. Huh, dick. Hey. It's fun, right? Actually, this is not fun at all, but. I'll do it. I'll do it. Relax. I'm doing it. I got an email. All right. This certainly isn't very exciting. I'm just bringing some of the stuff out of there, so... Like I should be talking, but I don't have much to say. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Alright, so that does that. Hey, okay. So like I said, I have the cleaned up inner mountain wheels. And let's see how they uh, spin here. Ooh, nice! Very free rolling. <laughs> okay. Enough silliness. 
Right, good. Carefully put in the resistor wheel. Mm, okay. okay, now one thing I tend to do, I'm just going to check the wheel sets. That mm, looks good. Now people will say you have to do this. No, you don't. Because, well, here's why I say that. If you have a wheel without a gauge, trust me, the layout's going to catch it. Now I know it's always better to catch it now, but it's not the end of the world. Because I just had an op session, and sure enough, there was one car kept derailing as it went through turnouts. And what it was, was one of the wheels had kind of broken on the axle and it spun out. So it was a little bit too wide. Not by a lot, but just wasn't enough, and it was picking all the frogs. So, okay, so you bring it into the shop and you fix it. So, again, it's not the end of the world if you don't do that. The layout will catch that kind of stuff, but I just want you know, people to freak. and say, oh, you, you have to do it. No, you don't have to do anything. So, now what I do is just for a little bit of fun, I take this Panzer Aces. This is a Vallejo model color. Number 302 Dark Rust. Again, I have no idea if that shows up. But it's 302 Dark Rust. And you can see I have my lovely little pallet here. <laughs> which is just a piece of archival mat that I used to use when I was doing photography. I just put a little dab here. Dun, dun, dun. Boom. Just a little bit. And then I have some water. And a brush, and I just take this, and I kind of water it down a little bit. No real serious measurements, I just kind of get into a little bit, so it's not full strength. And then, what I do, and I have to get my little magnifiers on. I'm just going to paint. You see it? I'm going to paint the springs. Just for the fun of it. You don't have to do this. I've seen them where they do look rusty. They don't look rusty. Depends on the truck. But just for completeness, I'm going to go ahead. What you also can do, if you think it's a little bit too... Um, Tannish and not rusty enough. Okay, take a little bit of. I'm just kind of diluting it here a little bit, and you can even put it in the wheel if you want. If if you think the wheels are where'd you come from? What is this? Boom! Get out of there. Now you can always come in. You can rush the wheels up a little bit. Hey, whatever you feel like doing. But again, the intent is this is not meant to be contest model. It's just <laughs> quick. I'm I'm going quick here. I'm going quick, trying to get the thing. On the layout, so it's not it's not to be a beautiful weathering job. But if you'd like to add some more rust, and you want, you know, it depends on how much you dilute this with the water. You can tone things down a little bit, which is fine. You, you know, if that's what you prefer. You go ahead and do it that way. I'll just do that a little bit in here. If you want a little bit more, if you want to come in and actually hit the brake shoes and knock yourself out, you can do that. Which I tend to do. But again, if you're just going fleet weathering, alright, that's good enough. So that's a little bit of the rust on there. I have no idea if you can see it because I'm not even looking at the camera. Alright, so now what I do, well, actually, what I want to do, uh, pardon me, I'm going to do, since I have the paint out, I'm going to do the other truck for the flat car as well, which I don't know if you can see the flat car, but that back. Nice. Okay. Now you might wonder, and I don't really think it matters. So I have the insulated side on both, but like, as long as it's insulated, I don't think like, it really matters. You know what I mean? If one was one side, one was the other, not going to matter. Not going to matter! Alright, so I'm going to get again, get some water on here. Tune it down a little bit. Oh, we're looking crazy on that one. I'm going to go ahead and just... 
Ooh. I need a little more paint on it. Need to dry that off on a paper towel. That's got more water than anything. That's going to be really subtle. That's okay. Okay. There's those springs. Again, it's not too difficult a concept. All right, boom. That's good enough. All right, I'm going to leave that because I may use that for some weathering on the car. We'll see. All right, so now what I do, I'm going to take this bad boy. See, and this way I didn't lose them. But you're, if you're doing things quick, not a big a deal. Big a deal. But if I do things, walk away, come back a week later, I lose crown. I got Katie Coupler sitting on the bench. I have no idea what they're for. <laughs> you know, what did this come out of? I, I, don't, I don't remember. All right. And, of course, this end of the core is different. Watching the grass grow, isn't it? All right, so tight enough so it moves, but not so tight that it restricts the right about there. Hang on. Okay, so now this car, you can see. I don't know how well it's showing up up there. But you can see it has a little bit of actually looks pretty good. I don't know why I, I, I don't think it's from the paint. Maybe there was some finger well, they're not fingerprints. But it looks good. It looks like nice weather. <laughs> but you know, you can pretty much leave it right like that. You can see how the, if you can see the truck's got trucks and wheels are painted, a little bit of rust there on the springs. The roof is toned down a little bit, but I'll show you what I would do to the roof. So there's that side. You know, and like that, boom, you can put it on the layout, it's fine, it's done, it's weathered. And that literally was about a, I don't know, a 15 minute car. Now, if you want to do some more, if you don't like the way the couplers look, you can do the same thing, which I, I, I tend to do it, so well, let's do it. What I'll do is I'll come in here again with the same rustish type color. I'll come in here and hit the coupler with it. Now this is going to mean you usually have to come back and free it up a little bit. I'll even do the coupler box here. A little bit more of the rust here. And back here. And then a little bit of the diluted stuff. You know what I mean? Just to give the coupler a little of a rusty look. Usually if you paint like this, you will have to come back because the spring will get some paint on it. You just got to give it a little convincing to move. I'm painting that coupler box. Okay, I'm sorry. This is, I'm trying to remember. I got to show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. Now, you can also, if you want, on the end of the car, on the brake wheel, again, you can take some of this kind of the rust wash and you can put it, you know, wherever you want. I'm going to put it up top here. Just kind of subdues things a little bit more. Depends. Now, now we're getting, again, I would say the car could be done. But if you want to do a little bit more, you certainly can. Just depends, you know, how far you want to take it. I'll just hit it down here a little bit. And again, the more 
diluted, you make it, you know, more of a wash, it'll be real subtle. Maybe you just want to hit the stirrups a little bit. All depends, I mean, because again, that the car is fine the way it is for the layout. And we're trying to get things done, get things done rather rather quickly. Again, the flat car will be different. And we're going to talk about that next, but it just depends. What do you want to do? You, know, you can make it real, real subtle. If you want, you can do the whole end with the lettering there. Kind of get it in between the end ribs here. Just depends. You can't do a whole lot of the ladders because they're freaking cast on. I come down here in, in the corner. Maybe in here. Let's get a little bit more, a little more of a wash in here. Just trying to kind of disguise the fact that it's an ugly cast on ladder but again most people when they are operating they do not care now if you want to go a little bit crazy you can always put some of the wash you know here and just it's all it's all going to dry and it's all going to kind of look subdued once you get it done i try to think the way the car would weather a little bit see it ran down there on the side and again, I wouldn't normally go this far. I'm just kind of showing different things you can do. If you want to get really into it, it always helps to have a photograph of a real... Maybe not this particular... You know, if you have a photograph of a boxcar you want to weather, you don't necessarily have to have, necessarily have to have an Indiana Harbor Belt car. It could be any type of boxcar that you might want. If there's a certain pattern. I'm thinking of doing one with some like white stains around. I've seen that some photographs, but I want to find the photograph to get a look at it. Now what I'm doing here is just taking some of this in the door. Just to kind of give it a little bit of a yeah, some more water to it, make it more of a subdued wash. Bring it along the top of the door railing here, the door guide. You know what, just for the fun of it, keep it kind of subdued. I'll okay, continue along the very bottom of the car. Just a little wee bit here. Alright, let that dry up on that side. You can as well, if you want to, let me just uh, flip this car again. Get on the underside, if you want to add a little bit of rust to the air reservoirs and the triple valves and all that kind of fun stuff underneath the car. Just kind of subdue things a little bit. That's cool. Let me get this. Let me as well do this door. This will be this is pretty light, and those will be pretty subdued. see how it looks. Oh, I, I went over. Oh, geez, that's terrible. No, it's not. Just go ahead and rub it in, man. Hey, this panel got weather for some reason. It'll be subdued. So again, when it dries up, it'll look fine. Like that. Okay. So I'm going to take that car. Oops, sorry. See, I, I knew it was going to hit the tripod. Let that one you know, sit over there out of your view for a minute. And then we're going to take, here's the flat core. And you can see this looks kind of nice. Uh, you see it's got a little bit of that German field gray on the bottom. Looks like it's kind of, you know, dusty and dirty and sprayed up a little bit. Looks good. So, just for fun, even though you can never see this. Again, I don't worry a lot about on this type of car. Again, on the uh, brake lines and stuff, just because it's just not, you're not going to see it. And these aren't meant to, again, we're, we're trying to do things quickly, easily. So, there's the flat car. Again, the deck just has the, the initial spray on it. We're going to work on that. 
I'm going to come back in here. Get the coupler. I have too much, too much water on this. Just going to rust up the coupler. Just subdue it a little bit. Wouldn't have to, but hey, what the heck. I have that paint blob on there, so I might as well use it, right? <laughs> it's so expensive. Okay. Coupler. This is pretty subdued. I'm going to go ahead and hit the end of the car. A little touch more. If you get it on you think it looks too heavy, just get your brush wet and come back in and wet it down. And it kind of flows into the, somewhat into the nooks and crannies and whatnot. Alright, that's good for that end. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Actually, I kind of like the way that you can, again, I, on this car, I'm not going to stop here because of the deck. It, it's so obvious you need to do something with the deck, and, and we'll work on that. But again, for the box car, I could, I could, I could have stopped, you know, what, 10 minutes ago. So what I'm going to do now is figure out how I want to weather this, the deck. A little bit more, a little bit more involved. What I'm tending to do is get a couple different gray colors initially again kind of make them do a wash and just kind of randomly put them on the deck of the car then come back with some of the Vallejo washes and kind of blend it all together so let me get that set up and we'll go ahead and do that okay hopefully this works so what I'm going to do for this car now is to put an initial layer of some grayish colors so I just grab some. I, I hate to say colors because it use whatever you want, but this is a uh, blue-gray, a pale blue-gray, 70.905, a dark sea gray, 70.991, and a little dark, a dark blue-gray, 70.867, all out of the Vallejo model color line, because that's what I like to use. Again, you could use cheap crafts, uh, you know, the stuff from Walmart, the different uh, brands. Of it. It'd be fine. You can, it's fine. I just have these right here so I reach for them. I'm not saying you have to use these. Just to get a couple different colors of gray. So I'm just going to take these again. This looks like a mess, but I'm going to just put some of that gray there. Okay. Put the dark sea gray. Woo! -hoo. That needs a little bit of a shake and bake. Okay. Yes. No big deal. Getting your weather, you're not painting your house. That one there, and then some of the blue gray. If these blend together and mix, you know, okay, that's cool. Alright, I have a little, little bit larger brush, slightly larger brush. And hopefully you can see this. I'm going to get it wet. And I'm just going to come in here and kind of get things a little bit wet and then just brush it on the car kind of let it be wherever it wants to go come here with some of the darker one again kind of let it go and let's go with some of this nice little Right over here. Whoa, look at that. Oh my goodness, it looks terrible. Don't worry, we're going to blend it all later. You know, if you think it's a lot, just come in with the water and just kind of wet it down or come back with some darker color and kind of intersperse it. Give it a nice little murky. A lot of this is going to dry up and evaporate, so it's not a big deal, trust me. Go with some of this color here. Or this color here, just whatever. And get some water on it. Just have some fun. <laughs> Sorry there, Mr. Flat Car. Alright, get that in there. You can certainly leave some of that, that color like that. Because again, we're not we're not done yet, so just 
I don't know how it's going to look, so we'll see. Draw my brush a little bit there on the paper towel. Like this. This end. Oh, that looks terrible, eh? Well, let's just spread it out. Like I said, it seems that most of these cars tend to weather a wood deck, tends to weather toward a darker, you know, a subdued gray. Now, if you have a prototype and you want to follow it, cool. But, you know, I have no prototype. I'm just kind of looking at this and saying, eh, what would look good? All right. So I, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and let this actually sit for a while. Let it dry up. Again, if you don't like it, just come in with the water. If you draw the brush, it'll kind of pick up some of the paint. If you want to be crazy, you just you want to leave a, like a board that, for whatever reason, looks a little bit brighter, or a couple boards, just go like that. That's cool. Again, it's, it's, it's more of a wash. It'll kind of blend and flow a little bit. If you want to paint individual boards, I guess you could, but... I'm not into that. Not for this. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna let that sit, and uh, maybe let's see. If we, let's play with the roof on the box cars. Let me bring that back over, and we'll just have a little have a little fun with that. Okay, dokie. Now I'm gonna try, which I haven't done yet, because I, I usually, usually use some of the washes, but I got these. These the same grays, right? All right. These are kind of watered down. I'm just gonna let's see what happens if I just kind of come in here and do a little bit of. I don't panic. I'm not usually saying, "Oh yeah, it looks terrible." Just relax, relax. Well, see, the more you add water to it, the more you can kind of subdue it. And then, trust me, when it dries, it's not gonna dry this bright. Oops, I got some over here. Oh my god, that's a travesty. Because you know. Railroad cars are always so nice and clean and pretty. Let's do that. Now let's see for the roof walk. What should we do for the roof walk? That's wood, right? So let's see if we can uh, if I can pull this maneuver off here. Just try to subdue it, make it look a little bit like a aged wood, not so much something that's painted. Again, we're going to come back and put some washes on this. Now, again, this is kind of like the advanced level. Not really. Nothing I do is advanced. But you certainly could stop and have put this car in the layout before doing this, and it would have been fine. But just for a little bit of variety, come in here. Get the roof walk. Again, just trying to make it look like it's a little bit of weathered wood. Oops, I got it on the roof. Oh, that's terrible. I actually like the way this blue-gray looks. At least to me. I don't know how well it shows up on the video. Alright, let that sit. See, it's already kind of even fading a little bit. Now we're going crazy. Water. Okay. Let that sit. And again, this here is really, really wet. So I'll just spread out some more of this. Like this roof got weathered here a little bit. Let's come in with a little bit of the darker gray. I don't know why. Why not? So I haven't tried it before. Usually I use washes. So this is brand new. This is the first time I've tried it, so I guess we'll learn together. One thing I do admit, I do I need to look at more photographs of 50s era boxcar roofs. Although, you know, and you need color photos for this. <laughs> you know, black and white photos are really not very helpful. 
those can be a little bit harder to find good properly exposed roof photographs from the 50s i guess you know understandable right people weren't necessarily shooting that back in that time but for us modelers that's kind of what we need to see you know went crazy on that so i'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch more water to this And whether this is going to look okay, I do not know. I think there's plenty of stuff up here. I'm just going to keep spreading this around. Yeah, a little bit of this color here. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. It. You know what I'm going to try, just for the fun of it? I was thinking of using a chalk white, but I'm going to try this, kind of this blue-gray. And this could be, this is risky here, folks. Don't try this at home. All right, here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to really dilute this. As you can see, I'm taking this, this I think is the pale, this is the, yeah, this is the pale blue-gray. Nice color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say something happened over here. I don't really know what. Oh man, you are really going crazy on this one. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. The battery went dead. <laughs> the camera shut down right as I was in the middle of weathering. And I left it sit on the car, so I don't know what's going to happen. So let's uh, get back to Oh, see there. Sorry. Let's get back to this. Can kind of make it look like. Again, I'm not sure what happened up here. Something did. And I kind of ran down the roof. This isn't exactly what I'm thinking, but again, we're just kind of playing here. Again, the more you put water on it, the more it's going to subdue it. And you see how it's puddling down here? Put your brush in there. It should usually pick that up. Whoop. Pick that up. So, see, it's kind of, you know, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'll am i try to take some pictures. I don't know how well it's going to show in the video, but it's kind of a subdued, like something happened off the roof. And it kind of ran down the car. Puddled a little bit here at the bottom. Alright, all right, we'll also let that dry. So now, come back with a little bit of water here again, and you can keep doing this with water until it really starts to dry. So I'm going to let this sit. That's the next step. Let it sit. Walk away, do something else, have dinner, whatever. I guess I better check this side, make sure nothing's going crazy. Yeah, see, it got a little bit of runoff over here. Too much. Let me see if I can get that a little bit wet. Right, I'm come in here. Ah! Come in here with a, with a wee bit of this paper towel. I don't really like the way that's sitting on the side there. And that's not terrible, but okay. Do that. It's all kind of sitting along in here, so maybe I better. We'll see something nefarious happened in here. I don't know what, but just to kind of blend it all together, bring it along the edge of the roof like that. Why? I don't know. Oh, look at that. That's a cool little, look, little stain that kind of came down. Let's see, it came and kind of ran down these rivets right here. Now you can. Some people might say, how come you didn't go in and add some darker colors to the rivets, to the rivet line? Yeah, you can do that. Again, that's getting a little bit more than just a fleet weather. But absolutely, you certainly can do that. 
come in here and kind of hit the rivets a little bit. I've done that on some cars. Again. It depends how far you're going to take it. All right. So I'm going to let this dry. I hope that roof looks okay when it's done. I don't know. And we can come back in and blend some stuff with some of the washes. So I'm not sure how well it's going to show with with this harsh light and the video or the camera up there on the tripod. So we will try that. Let it sit. Now if you, again, if you wanted to, you could do the ends. It, it just depends. But uh, we're going a little bit farther than normal. So there we go. So oh, let's take a look. Hey, sent. Let's, let's set that aside. Let's sit for a while. Here's the flat car drawing up. And see, and see how it's, it's, it did fade to kind of being more black. But not bad. I, I think that's going to be okay. I might, I'm not going to mess with it because, again, I'm just, it's not meant to be a contest model. And I'll just let that sit. And see how it's got some different shades of uh, various grays. Might be a little bit too dark down there. But again, it's better than it was, this straight black. So I'm going to let that sit, and then we'll come back and take a look at it in a little bit. All right, so what I'm going to do now, since the audio <clears throat> was pretty poor on the other segments, is just do a voiceover. So what I'm going to do here is I'm taking the Vallejo Wash Dark Gray and just start applying it to the car. I realize you still can't see crap. I apologize. The lighting is horrible. But anyway, so what I'm doing is just kind of putting it right on the car. Going to go down the deck, dips in, and dip the brush in water, spread it out. This is just kind of the initial layer to get something on there. This is going to kind of go into the, the areas between the boards. and it, it looks a lot darker than it's really going to dry. You can kind of see there. It kind of dries to a, a nice dark gray color. So just kind of keep going along, dipping the brush, adding it to the deck. And then I'll dip it in water. There, that's, I'm going for water. There we go. Spreading it out, moving it along. I find the dark gray works better. They make a gray and a light gray, but the light gray is almost like nothing. The gray is okay, but for this type of car, I thought the dark gray would be a better choice to start with. Get down again, the whole car. Just gonna do the whole thing. Just kind of slather it on there. Work it out to the edges. And you'll see one thing I'm gonna do later on is if you keep the brush dry, you can come back in and actually pick up any real heavy puddles or deposits that may be on the car. And now I'm going to pick it up. I think I'm going to rotate it. Yeah, just kind of roll it back and forth. You can see how that kind of flows and gives you a little bit of variety. Blending across the different boards. That's called the shake and roll. Very, very popular procedure. <laughs> and now I'm going to do dry the brush and come back in and start picking up some of the uh, excess that happens to be on it. If you come down there with a the tip, it, it will actually pick it up. And then you can also you know, spread it to other places. If it's a little too heavy in one, use the brush, pick it up, move it somewhere else. Alright, so that does the initial dark gray on the flat car. And now that we're going to move to the boxcar roof. Okay, onto the boxcar. Now what we're going to do is uh, one of my favorite, the blue-gray color. Again, the dark gray color. A light dust color. And a dark rust. Okay, so those are the three I'm using for this. And again, I apologize. You can't really see it that great. I really need to work on my lighting, but that's the roof with the washes of the different gray model color paints. So now I'm going to start with a light dust, which is kind of a yellowish 
dusty color, but it does fade kind of nice. It looks kind of bizarre when it goes on, but often when it's done, it looks a lot better. And I'm digging the very bottom to get some of the chunks <laughs> or some of the sediment. You can see how much heavier that looks there. Then I'm going to just kind of get some water. I'm going to thin it out. It does look bizarre when you first start. Come down on the side there. And again, if you do too much, you can just really, really put a whole lot of water on it. But it's you, you got to kind of play with it and get a feel for how things are going to dry. Because it does dry different than it looks when it first goes on. I learned that. I, I, mean, I panicked when I first saw it. I thought, that's going to look terrible. But you let it dry. Oh, now I'm coming in with a dry brush to get some of the yellow out of the slats on the roof walk there at the ends and the dry brush will pick the color out of it just kind of going in both ends again drying it on the paper towel just kind of picking it out I'm gonna let that sit there on the roof walk for now and you can always can come back later and blend it with a dark gray or the blue gray so now I'm going to add some to the roof panel. Again, just kind of trying to fade the roof. Not all roofs are going to look like this. Again, I've seen, a, I, think I mentioned later on, because I finished the video already, uh, some roofs look almost brand new. Just a real, real slight fading. This is supposed to be a roof that's been out, for whatever reason, a little bit more weathered than uh, other roofs. It's your choice. Of course, it always does help to have a prototype photo to look, although I've noticed that finding good color pictures of cars in this era are uh, a little bit of a challenge. All right, so now I'm going to go with the dark rust, and this fades to a nice, you know, dark, not the real light rust, like it's fresh, just kind of a nice darker rust. And again, all of these, like I said, they do fade, so it's not going to look quite that dark when it's done. <clears throat> just going to keep going here around the roof walk. I really don't have any set pattern. I just kind of do whatever I feel like to be honest. It's not like I start with you know the rust here, the the dust here, the blue gray here. It's like yeah whatever. Just kind of get it on there and slap it on and just have some fun. There's no real right or wrong. Just have a little bit of fun. Be creative. And if you really, really, really ever did it, just douse it in water, and right now it'll all come off. <laughs> Again, just moving to the other end. A little bit of random, every, you know, different panels. Various shades of rust, some with light, some with dark. Again, I'll get some at the very bottom. Get some of the darker color. And then some I'll get, you know, water it down with, a, with a water right there. Boom, water. Spread that a little bit. Just keep working it side to side, back and forth. Like I said, this is a little bit more advanced for a true quick fleet weather car. I wouldn't do this. I just would. I would have stopped just with the uh, that Vallejo spray, the German German field gray, which again is a great color. I really like. Highly recommend that. Of the three colors, you, I think you definitely would want the Panzer Gray, which is grimy black. You want the Khaki, which is a good dust, earth type color. And you want the German Field Gray, which is kind of a subdued, grimy black type color. Good color. All right, so here we are continuing on with uh, Rust. Sometimes you got to be careful to get it really, really wet. It might uh, drip over the side, which can be cool. It's going to be a good look. Just be aware of it. And you can see I'm not checking because I didn't. I forgot to check. But uh, that can be a point where if it runs over the side, it can be kind of cool. All right, so now I'm coming back with a little bit of the dust. Kind of blend it in with the rust. The dust with the rust. Yeah, 
just keep dabbing it and working it however you like it till you feel it looks good. Again, there's no real right or wrong here. I don't know if you have a prototype photo, because that does help if you're trying to model a specific car. Here I'm just kind of going crazy. Okay, now I'm going to water down the roof walk a little bit. You can see how that faded before I, you can see all that before it looked real kind of yellowish and dusty. You can see how it faded. It does. It's amazing how much these they do fade when they dry and evaporate. I'm coming back in and kind of picking up some of the excess. Sometimes that's good to leave, especially like along the uh, the roof ridges. You know, the raised section between um, uh, between the panels it can look good to have some rust colors laying in there. All right. Close those two up, and now, da da da, the blue gray, my favorite color. If you put a gun to my head, so you can only have one, one wash, it would be this wash. I just like it. If I only have one paint, it would be the Panzer gray. <laughs> you can do a lot with it. All right, so then this, I'm gonna kind of take this. This, this kind of again weathers to a nice bluish gray which is what the the name of the wash is but it's just a good overall kind of blend everything together type color and i really like it and again you know metal kind of does tend to weather age to that uh, in my experience to kind of a bluish gray color even the even the wood on the roof walk Again, I kind of blend it in, and if it got, if that dust was just way too much, you could come in with some of this and kind of subdue things a little bit. So we're going to keep working the panels again. Move it around again, trying to show, but again, the light. I don't know if it's the LED light. It's just, it's just, it, it looks great when I'm doing it, but when I saw the video again, I do apologize. The video is terrible be a lot of dislikes on this one but again I wanted to do it at least show you what I'm doing and I will make an effort to try to improve the lighting so you can actually see much much better and also get a, a, a lapel mic so the sound is better too this is definitely amateur hour all right so I'm gonna take that let it sit let's say you just kind of see what the sides look you can do the washes on the sides of the car as well uh, but it will kind of look more like a stain. And there's that, that little bit of gray wash over there on the one end of the car. I'm not sure I'm in love with that, but eh, again, I was kind of playing around with that. All right. So those are those colors done. Now it's got to sit for a little bit because you got to let it sit because it's going to dry different, like I said, than it looks. All right, so here's the flat car. And now, like I said, we the, the, the initial dark gray coat has dried or started to dry. It's not fully dry. And now I'm going to go again. It's going to look bizarre. I'm going to go with the dust to kind of highlight different boards. Get at the very bottom again get some of the sediment that's on the bottom of it i know it looks crazy doesn't it but i'm telling you it really does fade and look and look good once you get the whole the whole thing on and you can always wet it down with water these are acrylic washes so you can wash them down with water or wash it off if you don't like it just moving the different areas of the deck I do find that this dust color is kind of a good when it when it dries it looks kind of like good faded wood. And now with the blue gray, get my favorite color. And you can start different areas and eventually you'll see I'm just gonna kind of right over the other, just kinda of let it blend, flow together. Again, it's weathering, you know, we're not we're not painting our houses or a priceless work of art. We're just trying to get a car weather to make it look a little bit better than the straight shiny black plastic and 
I'm going to the very bottom again for some set. There, see, it's like kind of the sediment at the bottom can kind of give some interesting looks when you do that. So I like to go to the very bottom and then come back with some water. Just dip it in and kind of spread things out a little bit. Again, right over the other colors, they all kind of blend together nicely. And now I think I'm going to do the roll. Here we go. There's that patented roll. <laughs> that kind of helps to blend things back and forth. You can do it side to side as well. I don't remember if I did it or not. Back then with a little bit of the dust. And again, you don't have to spend this much time on it. You could stop right here. Let it dry if you like it. The one thing I do, and I did do, I think I showed it in a, in a following clip, is when this is all done and dried, and I mean, and I mean let it dry overnight, I will come back in with a final coat of the dark gray, which kind of blends everything together, flows into the, you know, the, the areas between the boards, looks really nice. I think I mentioned that in an upcoming clip. But here I'm just kind of playing a little bit, just having some fun. And be careful, that's why I, I capped these, because I have knocked them over in the past and spilled them all over either what I was looking on or all over the bench, and it's just a mess. And now here I went crazy. This is a, a, a dark green color. Eh, let's see what happens. See that kind of like a mossy? grimy green color just a little tiny bit and then wet the brush and kind of blend it a little bit you know what would it be green but again once you get it all blended you're just trying to kind of create some nice visual variety on the, on the boards certainly wouldn't have to do this again I'm just, I'm just kind of playing now Pick up the excess. When I reach to my left there, I'm dabbing it on a paper towel. Alright, enough of that. Put that away. Ah, the rust. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dark rust. This is again this is a good faded rust color. Yeah, you see some of that, kind of a red, reddish-brown color on the wood. Just kind of hit it in different spots. There's no real right or wrong or rhyme or reason. Just kind of do it till it looks good. And what looks good to me might not, might not look good to you. You know, what uh, each of us have our subjective tastes which is fine again unless you can show a photo of a specific prototype no one's going to really be able to say you're wrong do the uh, patented side to side roll let it distribute itself back and forth there we go oh that's highly advanced the end to end oh with a twist wow this guy's crazy. Look, oh, he is going the full 360. Wow, folks, you're getting you're getting bonus here. You, you you're not even paying for this. So, <laughs> all right, so just kind of let that blend here. All right, now it's got to set up. So again, cap it so you don't knock it over and spill it, and let it sit for a while. So let that sit overnight, usually. Let it dry, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry up. It looks, the way it looks now, trust me, it's going to look different. If you let it sit overnight, okay, I'm just kind of coming in with some water and just kind of blending things a little bit. Just, again, just kind of playing around. Just showing you what you can do. I enjoy, to me, this is fun. I really enjoy this. I could, I could tinker with this forever. But, uh, oh, yeah, this is where I knocked off the, <laughs> I knocked off the, the stirrup on one end. Ah, rats. See, boo. 
Yeah, I know. Way to go, Rob. But we'll fix it. Right there. Yeah. Knocked it off. All right. So now that we're back to our normal behind the camera where the sound and, and uh, picture looks a little bit better. So that's coming up next. All right. I'm back to handheld. I uh, think this might show things a little bit better. And I just don't I mean, like I said, I don't have the proper setup for a good studio here. So what I did on this car, and I forgot to film it, <laughs> because I'm not used to this. I came in and all I did, and I don't know it's going to be real visible, it's kind of subtle. I put a, another whole wash on the entire deck of the Vallejo Dark Gray. Just let it go on there. What I was trying to get was in, in between the pieces of wood. I just wanted it to be a little bit darker. So, um, And that's all I did. And it, toned things down and kind of blended things a little bit and then I'm looking at it and I thought you know what might be fun these cars all have these stake pockets how about someone just forgot to take the stakes out so you can see I added two there it's a 132nd square lumber just put them in there put a dab tiny dab of super glue underneath and then broke a piece off and just laid it on the deck I don't know why I know it's probably dangerous it might fall off, but hey, you know, it was late at night and Bubba and Cletus were working and got tired of it and just went home. So it's uh, still sitting there. And then what I did, you know, I, I dabbed this on with a little bit of super glue underneath it, set it on the deck, and it was a little bit shiny. I probably had a little bit too much super glue. So, again, I don't know if this is going to show up here. I don't know if I can get the light in to highlight it. So I took some burnt umber pigment just a brownish type color and just kind of came in and went along the edge and then went along a little bit just on the deck again I, don't, I know the light's not great it's it's kind of subtle but just to give a little bit of color there like you know it's kind of things of water's hitting it running off and it's kind of staying in the deck a little bit differently so that's that and again, I don't know how well those stake pockets show up but uh, or the <laughs> pieces of wood in the stake pockets I did you can see I added a brake wheel I found one uh, went into my box of rocks and found the brake wheel I think off of one of the branch line kits I built I think I'm not positive and then cut a piece of 018 wire drilled number 77 hole in the bottom of the brake wheel very carefully and then also into the side, the end of the car there, where the brake wheel previously was mounted, and got that on. I did find I don't know which corner it was. I'll just show you this, but <laughs> I did <clears throat> glue back on the stirrup, and I actually found the grab iron. Believe it or not, it was laying underneath this piece of felt on the cardboard. How it stayed there and, and never fell off, I have no idea. But it certainly was it. So anyway, so that's been remounted. I super glued that back on as well. So that is pretty much it. Uh, I hope this shows better. Just kind of the variation on the deck. And to me, you know, is it perfect? No, of course not. It looks a lot better than the, than the uh, shiny black plastic that came off. So I, I like it. So for me now, this is ready for the layout. You could come in with uh, different pigments, do individual boards. You know, you take it to whatever level you want. But for me, if you get it on the layout, this is great. So I'm pretty happy with the way that car turned out. Looks a lot better than I got it. Again, I don't know if this will show the nice, subtle, you know, all that was. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I can adjust this so you can see it better. I apologize. You know, that's just the spray, the uh, Vallejo spray model spray the German field gray that's all that is and the trucks are painted I did add the rust on the springs one thing you could get to if you really wanted to was the ends of the boards probably could be hit a little bit but again I'm not gonna worry about it because most of the time let's be honest when we're looking at this car it's gonna be like that you know it's on the layout so we're gonna be above it you know, most people aren't going to be coming down and looking real close at the side and crawling around it. And <laughs> but 
to me. Okay, I don't know how well that'll focus and show it. I like the, you see it's subtle, you know, different grays and, you know, some of the rust I use and the blue gray. And a little bit of the green in there, you know, it's all just kind of make it look like it's aged wood. Now, I suppose if you wanted to, you can come back and put nail holes in it and, you know, get a good photograph of a deck of an empty flat car. Probably could do some more detailing on it, but for me, for now, again, for the layout, I'm happy. All right, so I'm going to pause. I'll bring the box car over and again, stay handheld here, and maybe the, the roof will show a little bit better. Alright, so that's what the roof is looking like. Again, I hope it's showing up okay. Or at least maybe a little bit better. Now that I'm a little bit, a little bit closer to it. Um, again, just kind of the variety. Just trying to make it look like it's kind of a weathered roof faded a little bit. You can see how the roof walk hopefully turned out. Let's see if I can get above it here. Now, are, are all roofs like this? No, of course not. Now I've seen some that look, you know, pretty much brand new, just a real slight fading. So you could just do a little bit of a spray of that um, of the Vallejo German field gray. Might be all you need. Or maybe come in just a little, little bit of a wash of a light gray, just to kind of tone things down a little bit. That'd be fine. So there's all kinds of variety. You know, one thing that really does help if you're going to get really serious about this is looking at photographs, color photographs. Of what you want to model again there's the side with that spill coming down I'm okay with that not exactly what I wanted I want it to be a little more streaky in terms of individual streaks but you know what again for a 15 minute layout car it's fine again the trucks were done and you can I guess you can see the I'll try to keep it steady I'm zooming in I don't want to get too shaky here trucks are painted the wheels look fine to me again if you wanted to do wheels in some more detail you certainly could but overall pretty happy you know for a branch line yard master series I think the car looks pretty good yeah it's obvious it's still got the molded on ladder and the molded on grab irons but you know okay again we're not trying for a contest we're trying in a relatively quick manner to get cars on the layout for uh, getting manned up for op sessions I think the brake wheel might be a little bit excessive. I didn't do a whole lot on the ends. Because a lot of times, let's be honest, you don't see the ends. Especially when they're in a, and it's in a train. So, all right. Oh, sorry about that. So, that is uh, that is it. Again, I need to work a little bit on some equipment to do a better video. I know some of the videos when I was showing the weathering of the deck and stuff, of the flat car was washed out just because the darn camera couldn't adjust right and I couldn't fix it in post. I do apologize for that. Hopefully, uh, this is a long video too. This is probably going to be over an hour. So, but hey, you know, people want uh, something to look at now that we're <laughs> all stuck inside. So, uh, that's it. That's the technique for relatively quick weathering. Now, it is different. Like if you do a gondola, that's totally different. In fact, I have an Accurail gondola kit. Maybe if there's positive reception to this, I could do a video on that one too, how I do gondolas, because those are a lot more fun. You can do a lot more on the inside of a gondola. <laughs> you know, things laying around and kind of nice and beat up and rusty and gunky and scaly and dirty, and there's some real fun things you can do on gondolas. So, all right. Again, apologize for some of the quality of this video. It's in certain parts. I need to work on my equipment. But hopefully, if you slog through the whole hour, fast forwarded areas a lot <laughs> you can see how in a, in a relatively quick manner you can get uh, cars kind of weathered for the layout so let me know what you think was this worthwhile uh too long yeah probably too long <laughs> anyway that's it so uh, maybe i'll get some photographs try to go over on the layout and see if i can get some stills of these cars and just throw them here at the end of the video to see what they look like and uh, if it was interesting let me know if anyone wants to see me do that gondola, certainly can. I need to work on my equipment. Maybe get a, a lapel mic and figure out how to light it better so you can actually see what in the world I'm doing. And it's not all washed out. So, all right, anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, more to come here as we all, say, all stay uh, self-isolated in our basements working on our layouts. Mm -hmm.